Okay, let's move into some chip, chip, chippery news here. We covered uh, Micron earnings last week uh, with a pretty big uh, uh, decline in the forecast. And then they follow through the next week and say, hey, we're going to spend $100 billion over New York uh, over 20 years. Screw you, Texas. We don't need you. Take you and your horse a packing. Yeah, well, I don't have a horse, but you have several. So I, can I borrow one? Sure. Um, time, buddy. But, but uh, any time, I, I don't think I can ride. I would be thrown off the back. So um, I'd love to see you ride. I'd yeah. get that on the video and put it up there on the on the YouTube. I'll be my two, my six shooters in my on my hip. But, you know, that's yeah. Texas, buddy. Um, listen, uh, this is just a continuation of the announcements that we're getting. Tech, uh, sorry, New York, for whatever reason, is becoming a little bit of like the next Silicon Valley. I don't know, Pat, but we got Global Foundries, we got IBM Research, and now we've got Micron building mega fabs, $100 billion, $100 billion 20 year commitment with a $20 billion phase one. Um, talk about a big commitment to New York. Now, uh, to the credit of the state, Pat, you know, well, um, there must be some serious tax breaks in this deal. Like I because, I, you know, we obviously know right now no company is going to commit to any major project, whether that was uh, Intel going to Ohio um, or this in New York, if the tax situation isn't going to be beneficial to them. Um, having said that, though, I mean, look, this is a really important continuation of taking what happened with the passage of the Chips and Science Act and making bigger commitments. Oh, Pat, by the way, tax break, it's 5.5 billion of incentives. So it's not in inconsequential, and I'm not sure that's gonna be all of it, but that's what they're saying is gonna, is gonna be in terms of incentives. Um, you know, you and I have talked a lot about, uh, you know, Micron, and obviously the company has come out with some softer guidance, slowing numbers. The company had an incredible run during the pandemic. And guess what? This is the this is literally the same thing we just talked about with AMD. Micron makes memory, which is tied directly to compute. There's a very strong correlation, more compute, more memory. And um, they have a pretty significant business tied to the, the PC. And so when you have a big decline in PC, so you'll see those numbers, you can be certain that it's gonna be a decline for Micron. Now the good news, and we've talked about this, is that Micron has um, also invested very heavily in diversification of its business to have more of the memory technologies for things like automotive, edge, IoT, data center, and those should be areas that could help the company keep a more robust footing. But long story short, we need to we need to uh, separate the short-term gyrations that semiconductors booms and busts that happen every handful of years. And, and talk about the national security technology leadership and the, really the purpose that stood behind the uh, implementation of the Chips and Science Act. And that is that the United States is almost 100% dependent on um, China and Taiwan for the manufacturing of all leading edge. And that uh, we not only need more leading edge, but <clears throat> we need all manufacturing, uh, we need capacity here in the United States. So whether it's Global Foundries, whether it's Micron, whether it's Intel, whether it's Samsung, or even TSMC, um, we need more capacity here. And so having more chip building here is going to be important. Uh, and Micron, I think, is making the right long-term decision to continue to invest here. But to your point, Pat, I'll, I'll finish where I started. Would have been awesome in Austin, but uh, congratulations to New York. Uh, Micron currently has the highest density uh, storage and is first to market with DDR5. This company is going to do really well, um, just like Logic in chips. Um, leading in transitions is is a big deal, and and whether it's memory, whether it's storage, whether it's things like CXL, Micron is leading uh, in those areas over Samsung and Hynix. Uh, challenges, though, I mean, I would say the biggest challenge and the biggest threat. I would say at the low end of the margin uh, spectrum uh, is the new Chinese manufacturers that are standing up uh, and building a bunch of memory. There was a uh, an interesting rumor about Apple, who is going to start buying uh, its memory uh, from Chinese manufacturers uh, for its iPhone. Wave that flag, Apple. <clears throat> um, but uh, anyways, I 
I was very skeptical that Micron would have landed in Texas because their arch rival, Samsung, committed to $200 billion in 11 cities in Texas over, over two decades. And uh, Daniel, don't you love, we should put out a number about what we think we're going to do in two decades, you know, and, and, and forecast that and put that out there. Yes. But and uh, I, want, I, want, I want immediate valuation and possibly even some liquidity based upon it. Exactly. Pay me, uh, pay me up front for it, please. Give but, me 10%. Uh, exactly. Uh, but anyways, I was skeptical because I couldn't imagine both Micron and Samsung near the same city. As much as I would love to blow up um, and attack and blame our city, our woke city leaders on uh, shooing uh, people away, I can't do that uh, in here. I never thought it was going to happen, but I, I hope this is not a trend where semiconductor companies are not choosing Austin, but choosing New York. And New York for decades has been a, a, a leader in semiconductor uh, research or even uh, even manufacturing. So congratulations to New York. 